Hello, this is Maria from Four Season Foraging, a Minneapolis-based business that teaches you to safely and sustainably harvest wild edibles. And today I'm here to talk to you about dandelion root. Now there's many different edible parts of dandelion, but at this time of year in the fall, the root is usually what you want to get. So I'm going to be focusing on that today. So I look forward to sharing that with you all. But before I get into the video, just wanted to thank you for watching and say, if you like it, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for notifications. It really helps me out a lot. And if you're able to, you can join me on Patreon. The link is right down there in the description box. And through that, you can pledge a small monthly dollar amount to help me keep making these free informative videos for y'all. So if you could do that, I would super appreciate it. If not, that's okay too. Let's get into the video. So let's start with dandelion identification. Now I'm sure dandelion is a plant that y'all are familiar with. It's super common, grows all across the US and also in Eurasia. And it's a plant that's commonly maligned. People tend not to like it. They call it a weed and spray all sorts of chemicals on it, try to kill it, get it off their lawn. But I encourage you to eat it instead because it is a delicious and healthy plant. So I hope I can convince you of that. But to identify it, I'm sure we're all familiar with that yellow flower it produces. So on dandelion, it grows on a single stem. There's only one flower per flower stalk and it's composed entirely of ray florets. So basically it looks like it's all petals versus something like sunflower which has disc florets as well. Those tiny little round flowers that make up the center of like a daisy or a sunflower. Here is the leaf of dandelion which again I'm sure is a common sight to most people. The leaves have these deep lobes on them, although that is variable. Sometimes it's just shallow lobes and sometimes they hardly look lobed at all. And there are only basal leaves on dandelion, which means all the leaves grow directly out of the ground. There's no leaves on the flower stem. So identifying dandelion is, I think, a little bit trickier than most people give it credit for. For example, here in Minnesota, there's actually two different species of dandelion, the common dandelion and the red seeded dandelion. And the two of those can be used interchangeably. So the only reason you would really want to tell them apart is if you're a botany nerd. Um, as far as I know, there's no taste difference or medicinal difference between the two, but I think it's an interesting little fact. And then besides that, there's many dandelion lookalikes. So all the lookalikes are edible, so you don't need to worry about accidentally eating something that will hurt you. But there's many plants like, for example, wild lettuces and chicory and cat's ear that look pretty similar to dandelion. Like the flowers look similar, the leaves look similar, and they also all produce a white milky sap. And you probably know with dandelion as well that when you break the stem or any part of the plant actually there's a white milky sap that comes out. So yeah there are many edible lookalikes within what's known as the lettuce tribe and I will briefly go over how to tell them apart. Most of them you can easily tell apart once the flower stalk comes up and it goes to flower. But the thing is, when you're harvesting the root, you want to get it when there's no flower. So you have to rely entirely upon the leaves to tell them apart. So I'll explain how to do that. But if you want a really in-depth explanation, I recommend this book, Nature's Garden by Sam Thayer. It's a great overall field guide and edible wild plant guide, but it has probably the best and most comprehensive guide I've seen to telling apart the different edible members of the lettuce tribe. So things like salsify, chicory, 
the wild lettuces, sow thistle. He talks about how to tell all those apart. So very in-depth and easy to understand explanation of that. So I highly recommend it. But basically when you're out in the fall or the early spring looking to harvest dandelion root and you're just going off of the leaves, what you're looking for, you want to look at the mid vein. So that's the main vein that goes along the middle of the leaf. And you want to look at the underside of that. In dandelion, it should form just like a hump, kind of like a little half circle. It shouldn't be sharp or pointed at the tip. And it should also be hairless, or maybe it will have like a few stray hairs on it, but mostly entirely hairless. So that will help you tell it apart from things like wild lettuces and sow thistle, which have a sharp pointed mid vein. So it's like triangular in cross section or tell it apart from chicory, which has a half circle mid vein like this, but it's hairy. So gotta look closely at the leaf. Might wanna bring a magnifying glass if your eyes aren't that great. <laughs> Also, just using your fingers to feel it helps. Does it have a sharp keel on there? Nope. Is it fuzzy? Nope. Then it's dandelion. So to harvest dandelion root, you first of all want to make sure you're doing it in the right season. Don't try doing it in the middle of summer when the plant is putting out flowers or seeds. Dandelion is a perennial, so it will come back year after year but you wanna get it when it's sending its energy down into the root. So that's late fall or winter, if it's warm enough to dig up soil where you are. Over here, the soil freezes, so not a great option for me, uh, but late fall, winter, or early spring is when you wanna get it. Now there is a difference between the fall and the spring dandelion root. Dandelion has a lot of what's called inulin, it's a dietary fiber, but it's actually something that our bodies can't digest. And you might be familiar with it from sunchokes or Jerusalem artichokes. They contain a lot of inulin, and that is what makes them so gas producing. <laughs> so you might have heard of the term Jerusalem fart a choke. Uh, that's because of the inulin in there, your body can't digest it, and so it makes you fart a lot. You may also be familiar with it. It's in chicory root as well and several other plants and you see it oftentimes added to like energy bars or like protein bars or that kind of thing to up the fiber content and sometimes it'll say inulin, sometimes it'll say chicory root fiber but same thing and Oftentimes it's marketed as a prebiotic. So supposedly this is something that gut bacteria feed on and it is supposed to help promote a healthy gut flora. I don't know how true that actually is. So, I mean, bacteria in your gut definitely feed on it. That's what makes you gassy. Like your body's not digesting it. The bacteria are eating it. They're releasing gas, but I don't know if that's actually helping you or not, like if it's actually encouraging the right bacteria. And if it's like, you know, causing digestive upset or making you gassy, then maybe it's not worth it anyhow. But regardless, just wanted to give you that little rundown about inulin. So the dandelion root in fall is much higher in inulin than it is in spring. So what happens over the winter with the cold temperatures it triggers the dandelion to convert the inulin into simple sugars, um, I believe mostly fructose. So in the spring, you'll get a sweeter root and in the fall, you'll have a more fibery root. And this is also something you might've heard of if you're a gardener, like sometimes people recommend leaving parsnips or carrots or other root vegetables in the ground after the frost so that they get sweeter. So it's the same thing with wild root vegetables as well, or at least some of them. 
So to harvest them, you want to find your basil rosette of dandelion leaves. So it should be just the leaves coming straight out of the ground in a circular pattern. And then you wanna get yourself some sort of digging implement. I like using a trowel. They also make those like little forked dandelion digging tools that are supposed to help you weed them from your yard. I haven't really found those to be particularly effective. I don't love them, but you can give them a try if you want. Otherwise, you can always just use a digging stick. I meant to bring a trowel today, but I totally forgot. So I was able to fashion myself this digging stick and hopefully it works all right. I do generally prefer a trowel, but you know, do what you can. And the dandelion will be a lot easier to pick if you find it growing in like loamy or sandy soil. That's why I'm next to a little lake here because the soil is going to be more sandy and loose and a little bit easier to dig up. But really, wherever you find it growing, you can harvest it. Just make sure it's not a site like right off the side of the road or next to a railroad track or something else that could be contaminated like that. So to dig up your dandelion, first you want to find a good specimen. And then what you want to do is try to dig alongside the root. You don't want to try to pry it up because that's just a good way to break the root. What you want to do is try to dig down into the dirt and dig around it to loosen it up. So here we have a basil rosette of dandelion. All the leaves coming out directly from the ground in this circular pattern. And here we have our digging stick. So I'm just going to try to loosen up around here and kind of stick my fingers in the soil to try to tell where the root is going. So hopefully I don't break it. <laughs> so that is a thing with dandelion. As you probably know, if you've ever tried weeding it, that it is hard to get out the entire root. Darn it, I broke it. But I did get a good chunk. <laughs> so here we have an idea of what you can find with dandelion root. And they do get much bigger than this. As I said, they're a perennial, so they can get quite large across and quite long, but size like this is just fine if you're making tea or coffee, which is what I like to do. And here you can see the latex coming off too. So what do you do with dandelion root after you harvest it? Well, some people like to eat it. I am actually not one of those people. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is. Maybe I just never got it like, in the right stage of growth or maybe I just never cooked it the right way I don't know but I tried it several times and was never really impressed with it but I do really like making a tea or a quote-unquote coffee substitute out of it so I just started doing that all the time whenever I harvested it and kind of gave up on just eating it but yeah maybe there's like a way to do it where it comes out good <laughs> and I just haven't found it yet or done it the right way. So if you like eating dandelion root, I would like to hear your experience in the comments down below. If you have some good recipes or techniques, I would be super curious to learn about them. I think one thing might be that I've never done before is like a long slow cooking because I was talking about the inulin. So inulin actually breaks down through a long, slow cooking. So if you put it in like a crock pot, for example, then the inulin will break down and you won't get that like uncomfortable gassiness. So maybe if I were to do that, it would be more tasty to me. But as I said, I do like making a tea and a coffee substitute. So as far as the coffee substitute goes, I really enjoy it but if you were to drink it like expecting something to taste like coffee then you probably would not like it um, especially if you're someone who really enjoys coffee and drinks a lot of coffee 
So I encourage you to just think of it as its own completely unique drink. Think of it like a roasted herbal root drink or something like that. And I think you will enjoy it that way. And it's actually really easy to make your own dandelion coffee. Um, I'll put a link to a recipe that I made right down there in the description box. But it's pretty simple. You just, you take the dandelion root home, you clean it off, you dry it completely. So you want it to basically snap like a twig, like bone dry. And then you put it in the oven and roast it until it gets like a chocolatey brown color. And then you grind that and make a coffee out of it. And I've always used a French press to make that kind of coffee, or sometimes I've used like reusable tea bags. I've never actually run it through a real coffee maker. And I think you can do that, but I'm not 100% positive. <laughs> um, you might wanna, I don't know, double check. Just, I don't wanna ruin your appliances. Um, I'm pretty sure it's okay, but you might wanna double check. So, dandelion tea and dandelion coffee are really healthy for you. The whole dandelion plant is really rich in vitamins and minerals, so the root is as well. And it's also got some medicinal uses. So it's a diuretic, which basically means it makes you pee. So that can be useful for things like water retention, or bloating, or sometimes it's helpful in urinary tract infections. So yeah, keep those uses in mind. And then it's also a great digestive stimulant. The bitter qualities make it really good for your digestion, and it also has a specific function on the liver. It's a liver tonic. So that's the end of my video about dandelion root. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you liked it and that you want to go try out some dandelion for yourself. If you have any favorite ways to eat dandelion root or any favorite recipes, I would love to hear it. Please leave them in the comments below. But before you go, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring that bell for notifications. It's a great way you can help me out for free. But if you happen to have some extra money every month, you can join me on Patreon. The link is right down there in the description box. And through that, you can pledge a small monthly dollar amount to help me keep making these free videos for you all. So if you could do that, it'd be super awesome, but no worries if not. Either way, happy foraging.